Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, just out of curiosity, what is your heart made of? Gold. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, what if your heart was made of crystal? Even better. Well, good news. On the show today, to talk about uh, crystal hearts, uh, we have Aran and Aviv. Uh, Aran, Aviv, thank you for coming on the show. I'm very happy to be here. Thank yeah. you for having us. And what a wonderful segue. Yeah, that's, <laughs> as, that's the best I can do. Really. <laughs> that's his specialty. Alex will attest, that is probably the best segue I've done so far. It is. <laughs> well, or not. The thing that I want to talk about, you know, Crystal Heart is actually coming to, to Kickstarter. Before we talk about that, we should talk a little bit about the genus of it. So, up to four players. I, I'm, I'm really curious if you can tell me in your own words just what to up to four players is and, and how this all equates to what you're doing right now. Iran and I started working together years and years ago. Uh, we did a webcomic together back in Israel. We had a really good time working together. We work together well. So now that we, um, we've both moved to London about four years ago, um, we decided to work together again and do another webcomic. We were both interested in board games. Board games is, is a wonderful world full of uh, content and beautiful visuals and jokes because board games and gamers are funny. Uh, so we decided our webcomic is going to be focused on that. So it was two years of that and um, we kind of maxed out on board game jokes. Uh, we decided to do something slightly different and our real true passion was actually role-playing games. So we decided to take our main characters, our up to four players, well, they're four players, and have them play a game of their own. And uh, the game that they're playing is actually something we've played uh, 12 years ago with our friends. And we took that system, we developed it a little bit, and we gave our own characters to create their own characters and have them sit and play this game. And that is Crystal Heart. Ah, all right. So, yes, yeah, so your characters actually have characters all their own. Yes, we distinguish yes. them by saying players and characters. Aha, okay, so you have players and characters. Yes. Tell me a little bit about those players and characters. Well, the players are very generally based on us because we needed someone to base them on. And we, I have a wife, Aviva has a husband, so that, that's four. And we, are, we have varied personalities, gaming personalities, I think. That are uh, pretty distinct. I uh, let's say we've we've took took all of them and emphasized them, exaggerated them into these players, and then we did like two years of trips with them. So by the time we started the RPG story, we already knew what the players are like, what they like, who they are. So it was pretty easy to think about which characters they're going to create. Which I don't know what to say player archetypes. I I'm not a firm believer in archetypes. I believe in motivations, which is by the way why we actually created them thinking about motivations. Which we took each character and said, sorry, each player, my god. We took each player <laughs> and and said, said What's the, the motivation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not it, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. We can never It's all right. It's a problem. It's a problem. And we said, which, which motivation would this player be interested in giving for their character, to their character? And right. that's how we came up with them. And I think that we have, well, we have six distinct personalities because of this. Three players, three characters. But obviously not that distinct, because I would claim your character is never not that far away from you. Right, that's that's a harder thing to do, is to make a character that's completely foreign to you as a person. I don't believe it's possible. I don't think it's, it's a thing. I don't even think it's something that we should strive for. That being said, some of our players in the story might think so, and have been trying to play themselves very differently with, I think, entertaining results. <laughs> it can be really fun to play something that's not like you at all. 
but playing something that isn't remotely even close to like human for instance is is near impossible yes yes and i think that for an ongoing comic where you're trying to tell a story with these players and these characters you don't really want to go that foreign i mean it, it might be interesting for like uh one story bit or one joke but after that it's like uh, okay so there's two completely different characters what are you trying to say so tell me a little bit about the actual characters like I'm I'm actually curious because you had mentioned that they're they're sort of like you. Uh, who are they supposed to represent? Like, uh, I'm gonna guess that he's supposed to be sort of like the the GM, the game master in in this uh, scenario. Uh, Nadav. Yes. Yeah. Who who, who yes, is indeed. and who is he? he? He's basically me. He's basically basically okay. me. Okay. Um, by well, he has several very obvious characteristics. That are very much like me for everyone who knows me, even lightly. I mean, he wears the same puffy shirts as I do. Uh, he's always scruffy. He's into all the games all the time. No one is quite sure what he's actually working at. I mean, what's his job? <laughs> um, <laughs> and he is the eternal GM. I, I am the eternal GM of our group. I'm always the, run, the one running things for our group. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, lately it's been changing a bit. Uh, all of my players, Aviv included, have run one-shots. Aviv is thinking of running the whole new D&D campaign for us. Ooh. And that sort of thing is very much encouraged by me, obviously, and, <laughs> and might be reflected in the comic as well, because Nadav would like to play as well, obviously, sometime. But for right. now, he, he enjoyed the same thing I enjoy, creating the mechanics that you require in order to have crystals and, and everything that is crystal related in the world and mm -hmm. tweaking them and working with them and then telling a magnificent story magnificent in scale not, not specifically in maybe uh quality that's up to you i'm guessing then that nadav is is pretty close to you in terms of oh, the yes. character okay so it's basically a pretty direct analog but it's the easiest one because it's right i don't want to say just the gm but uh, <laughs> compared to how we show the players portraying characters, mm -hmm. just having the person who runs things, I mean, there's something very stable and continuous about him. He's just there. He's just doing his thing. While, mm -hmm. for example, uh, Rotem, who plays Muna, the leader of the party, is based on Viv. Mm -hmm. But like all the players, Way more exaggerated. I don't think that you would, if you would sit to play with Aviv, you would feel like you are playing with Muna, for example. Uh, I think if you sat to play with all four of us, you could probably match the real person with a player based on them. Yes. But maybe not like make a, a, a direct um, comparison between one person and their characters. Maybe except for my wife. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who is the inspiration for Lily. And she is very much Lily. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Lily is very much exaggerated. My wife thinks it's really romantic, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant that uh, Lily is so much like her, and uh, Rafaela, Lily's character, is so similar to characters that she would play. So, uh, Aviva, I will ask you, uh, going back to, to Rotem for a minute, and Muna, is that pretty close to you? Like, is, is Rotem a, a pretty close uh, analog to you? I think in many ways we're, we're quite close, kind of trying to play a character true to herself and and um role play more than really delve deep into mechanics is very much something that i do around the table mm -hmm. and uh something that i tried to take care of with both autumn and muna is get the sense of autumn's um artistic sensibilities i think muna mm -hmm. is designed in a way that i would design my own character kind of and and autumn herself is very a very creative visual person uh, and i think that's a, a lot of where our similarities lie she's also very much into let's see what happens let's uh <laughs> let's do the wrong thing let's have some drama she's let's not explore. trying yeah yeah she's not trying to win she uses her character as I don't want to say a pawn, but sort of like a pawn in this dramatic story. And she's more than willing to see Muna go through all sorts of strange things because it seems awesome and interesting. And Aviv is exactly the same way. He's an excellent player to have as a GM. <laughs> uh, so, so it's sort of like experimental gameplay 
as experimental storytelling, that sort of thing that she's looking for. Yeah, I think she's she's looking to explore the game to to get a sense of everything that Nadav has created for them. And if if she's mm. um, keeping her own character too safe or sticking to the rules too much, she's not going to see all of that. And there's so much to see. Uh, so in terms of just the player and the character, are they pretty close or is, is Rotem playing against type? I would say she plays uh, exactly two type. But, okay. well, there's, there's, a, there's a thing in Crystal Heart where mm. when you change your heart with a crystal, the crystal gives you not only superpowers, but also strange new sensibilities. It changes the way you think. Mm. And uh, I think Rotem is using this not as an excuse to try out new ways to play her character, but she's certainly riding along with the wave. So when she, for example, changed the crystal that she had to something that she only knew was fierce, she wasn't sure what the new crystal was all about, but it was fierce. She ran with it and did made decisions that were against the group and very much against Muna. Uh, because Rotem wanted to see Muna doing this. I don't want to say cool. It's not cool, but again, no, I'm used to this. It's just okay, it's you. It's just different. Sure. And that's entirely something I would do as a player. If I, and that's, that's one of the big draws for me to Crystal Heart is the fact that you can just change something very fundamental to your character and then play the character uh, either just slightly differently or completely differently and have total fun with it that's super fun to me as a player before i, I talk about the other two characters because i i do they look amazing uh <laughs> i guess i i need a little bit more information about just the uh general concept behind crystal heart so i can kind of get an idea of, of the characters so so when you were talking about crystals and their interaction with people uh can you tell me a little bit more about how that actually works sure um okay. it all starts from the question what is fun to play and okay. what is unique and unusual to play? Because we've already played superheroes. I mean, both of the and I really, really like superheroes. And we like fantasy. And we like... I was always wondering how we can combine the two genres. And I think we, we sort of did that. Mm -hmm. um, but more than that, we just... We wanted to have something that you can't experience in another place. Because then why won't you just go and experience that in another place? Right. So we have crystals. Mm -hmm. They give you superpowers and they change your personality and they are the main thing i'm leaning over toward the game design discussion we created <laughs> them instead of treasure in a way you okay. are not looking for gold or magic items you're looking for crystal and when you okay. get a crystal you are not rewarded by more power you are rewarded by new story option. Every crystal can be used if you spend a Benny, which is an insource, a resource in, in Savage Worlds, uh, a rare resource, so you don't do it all the time. If you spend a Benny, you can use your crystal to evoke any power you can think of as long as it's within the same theme as the crystal. The regular powers of the crystal are, yes, they are ranked by, by power. There are weaker crystals, there are more powerful crystals that give you access to more powers, and those are the ones that we are looking for when we go around. But they also have bigger, stronger, and more hindrances, more things that will influence you. When mm. you, for example, we wrote um, a heroic character, someone who's like level 15 in D&D, &D, and they use a crystal that's really, really powerful, and that person is basically a slave to their crystal. They mm. are now spending months thinking that someone is chasing them because their crystal gives them paranoid delusions that are so powerful, so strong, and work so well within the specific situation they're in that having all of this power it is, I mean, what does it give you if you can't use it or use it for the wrong reason? Oh. And that's actually a thing that I think a lot of scene agents, uh, we call our um, people that can replace Crystals, um, their heart with crystals, agents of scene. Scene is the organization. And I think that scene agents, the more powerful they become, the more experienced they become, the more uh, slightly deranged they become. And you can be Superman-like in strength, but you would be Bizarro-like in 
uh, in your sensibilities, in what you're trying to do. In the actual comic of uh, Crystal Heart, your characters are seeking out these crystals. Yes. And in the role-playing game, they will be seeking them out as well. Yeah. You start ah. with a novice crystal, which is like the weakest one. It's like, eh. And you're looking for seasoned crystal and veteran crystals and the legendary heroic crystal and the legendary legendary crystals. <laughs> oh, but, uh, okay. Yeah. I always love the legendary legendary crystals. Well, they are actually legendary. They're with the uh, capital L, they are legendary. Oh, the capital L. That... They've got orange text. They've got yes, exactly. <laughs> they've, got, they've got the They're flavor unique. text on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, got exactly. That. The other two players that you have, Lily, you were mentioning earlier. Can you tell me a little bit about Lily and her character? Her motivation is finding a very powerful crystal. That's why she joined scene. That's what her player wants for her. So she's all about powerful crystals and gaining more strength in a way. That being said, she is a street urchin from our East Europe-like land called Bogovia. It's the place where all of the downer endings happen. And she's from there, and she has a horrible backstory. And that's exactly what Lily would like to have. She wants to have a horrible person going through horrible things. <laughs> Sounds lovely. <laughs> that tells me so much about the character. <laughs> What was the development process for uh, somebody who just wants that? We have a very interesting strip from ages ago that we actually printed. I had printed it for my wife, and it's the only strip I think we printed that have in our house, uh, with Lily playing all sorts of board games. And it's just four panels, and we only show the last moment of the board game. So she's playing, for example... Um, Game of Thrones, the board game, and she loses and she's angry. And she plays Catan and she loses and she's really angry. And then she plays Pandemic and then everyone loses because it's a cooperative game and she's super happy. Because, and they ask why. <laughs> then everyone loses because Matt Leacock made a brutal game. Uh, basically, yes. And yes. they ask her, why, why, are, why are you happy? We just lost. But she says, it's not about me winning, it's about you losing. I feel like Lily would enjoy the game Diplomacy. Oh, yes, probably. Probably. Yes. She would be very much into it, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, fun story. Uh, we had uh, Leacock on the show, and uh, I, I thanked him for making me terrified that diseases are going to destroy me and everything that okay. I know. And he said, well, you're welcome. So at least he's aware. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least he's aware. So that's uh, Lily and her, her character, Rafaela uh, Arnaldi? Uh, yes. Sure, sure, sure. Whatever. It's close. <laughs> it's, 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 it's written down, so we don't it's care. It's written. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to ever say it. Yeah, you don't say these characters' names out loud, Nathan. They've all got nicknames. It doesn't matter. You d do what you do, call them however you'd like, um, <laughs> and do remember they are fictional characters. People Played by fictional people. I mean, so, that's fine. Yeah, okay, so don't worry too much about it. I, exactly. I, I'm getting this. It's Inception Inception. <laughs> exactly, yes. You mean Einception? Uh, so, uh, the last character that you have is uh, a guy, or Guy, but again, it's just written down, so it can be either, I suppose. Uh, no, no, that's, that's actually an actual name, uh, actual Hebrew name from Israel. That's Guy. Yeah. Oh, it is Guy. Oh, okay, good, yeah. good. And he's a guy. It's weird, yeah. <laughs> he is a guy. That, that makes sense. How, how is it spelled? G-U-Y. Yeah, that, that's Nathan, that's Guy. That's Guy. No, no, I get why you would think <laughs> it might be otherwise, because why would someone be named Guy? But that's, that's, true. that's the name. Sometimes I have seen that, and they go, no, it's Guy. And I'm like, uh, all right, fine. Sure. Okay, go for it. Uh, but anyway, so Guy, who is just the way it's spelled, what is his character and uh, how did you come up with him? Um, he plays Macintosh Frachtenhauser. Excellent. The thing is, Guy is the heavy war game player. He plays Warhammer. For them. He's oh, he's me. Warhammer. Yeah, he's Alex. <laughs> Good. <laughs> he enjoys the crunchy bits and using them in clever ways and making sure they all work together. So mm -hmm. he wasn't sure about his character at first, and I wasn't sure about his character at first, so we decided to make it into the second page. The second page is about him 
telling us about the mechanics of the character and then deciding who that person is. Mm -hmm. because I, I, I think it's a very legitimate way to create characters, and I really enjoy rolling for my attributes and then deciding who this person is. Mm -hmm. um, Guy, of course, would never in a thousand years roll for attributes. That's insane. Well, you don't know right. what you're going to get. But... You, don't, you don't do that in war games. What are you, crazy? Exactly. <laughs> um, and, and we've taken it a step further because um, this, the specific storyline that we are currently in, the third one, is about him and his family members. And we showed, just before we started it, how he approached the GM and said, I want to have a personal storyline, something about me and my family, because uh, I, I, I don't know a lot about my character and I would like to know s some more. So let, let's invent something. Let's make something. So that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, so what does Mac really do as a, as a function in the game? Like, what's his general uh, thinking as a character? Uh, I think originally he was supposed to be the mechanic. Mm. And I, I don't think he's mechanicked anything quite yet. Mm. Um, he's from Fjordstad, which is the northernmost land in our world. It's the land of scientists, well, crazy scientists, and sure. uh, all kinds of inventions and snow, loads of snow. Mm -hmm. So he has that mechanic knowledge, and uh, he operates the tank, the almost all-terrain vehicle that they're driving. Um, but also, apart from all that, he's kind of the tank. He, mm. he is the tank. Uh, yeah, he, right. he's, he's a big guy. He has one of the powers of his crystal is an armor power, which just covers him in this plus two, harder to hit, nice blue force field. Oh, okay. So yeah, he's kind of between that mechanic, clever guy on one side and just buff uh, protector on the other. Okay. Not quite like Alex when it comes to uh, role-playing characters. But it's a character of a character, so it could be like me, Nathan. <laughs> it, it's, it still could be like you. That's the beauty. Like if Hephaestus was playing a character, that might be what he chose. Yeah, there's, there's something to think about. I, I'm, I'm really interested in this whole idea because I tried this to some degree, one time, and we'll probably never do it again, the idea of making characters and then having those characters have characters. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what, what was the creative process like to develop all of that? Well, it's really important to always remember we are not telling a role-playing story. We're telling a story about role-players. So these are not characters that we created for characters. Everything here, even though it's based on Ex existing rules of an existing system, Savage World. It's a story, and we all created it to tell a specific narrative that we have. I haven't tried playing a character who has a character, and I don't. I. It's not something that is interesting to me personally, and it's not what I'm currently doing. I'm writing a story. So, for example, we thought long and hard about which system to use. For this because at first we thought we are telling a story we, we should use a system that tells a story maybe something fiasco like or fate and uh, maybe you want powered by, by the apocalypse we'll create a rule set something and then we realized how wrong that thought process was because we don't want a system that will tell our story i actually have a story to tell i want to tell about people deciding wrong choices for their characters and thinking about where to invest their points and having um, this sort of dissonance between player knowledge and character knowledge. And I need a system that will not do any of these things, that will not help me along. I need something like seven rolls. Just roll the die and try to get a four and run around and jump around and do all of these actiony things. That's what Savage World is for. It doesn't tell me anything. I tell it everything. <laughs> and that's very good because I must be in control of everything that's going on. So just like Nadav, you have mm. to do... <laughs> yeah. Just very like much. the GM character. Yes. Just like your GM character. If you have a character that's a GM, does that mean that they're a PC GM? Or are they like a, a PC master or a game player master? I don't know. 
Somebody clarify that for me. I I need to know the answer. Anyway, a big thank you to Aviv and Aran for coming on to the show and talking to us about Up to Four Players and Crystal Heart. It's a very interesting webcomic all about tabletop gaming, and we were really happy to have them on the show. If you want to find more information about that comic, you can actually just go over to it right now, up to fourplayers.com. And if you go to up to fourplayers.com slash crystal heart, you can actually sign up so that you can get the starter set because on the next episode, we are going to be talking about the Kickstarter that is coming right up, actually November 20th, for Crystal Heart, which is going to now be an actual setting for Savage Worlds. So in addition to actually finding out how you play Crystal Heart, we also had to find out a lot about Savage Worlds, which Alex and I are really not familiar with. And it's actually surprising because when I realized what a community there is around Savage Worlds, they actually just had a Kickstarter themselves for the Adventure Edition, which went incredibly well. They funded in under five minutes and had over 5,000 backers. I was really surprised. I think when you actually hear them talk about it, uh, not just the setting, but also the uh, system itself. If you were not familiar with it before, I think you're going to be very intrigued by it. And Crystal Heart as a setting, a lot of interesting stuff going on there, and you're going to want to hear about more of that when we come back on the next episode. If you want to find out more information about Delve, you can go to delvecast.com and find all of Delve and Orbital and attempting to play all of the things that we've done recently, even some of the little experimental things that I've been playing around with. You can find it all over there. Uh, and, of course, you can find us online. Uh, I am at Citanium. Alex is at EXP Limited. The show is at Delve Podcast. And you can also find Aviv at Aviv Or, and you can find Iran at N-N-E-S-K. You can, of course, find us on all sorts of podcast platforms from Apple Podcasts or iTunes, whatever they're calling it at the moment, uh, Google Play and uh, iHeartRadio, I believe we're on right now. There's uh, basically every place that you find podcasts, you can find us. Uh, and, of course, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Stars are sort of like crystals, right? You just give me five crystals. We'll just call them that. It's, it's fine. When you go over to our website, please check out our Patreon just to see the kinds of things that we have there. Uh, even for a dollar a month, you can get all of our additional content, including completely raw interviews with all of these people that we do, the full, complete interviews, nothing cut out. Uh, that's uh, fun for audio files, I hope. Uh, and, of course, I want to thank our Shiny Level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dom Perry. Uh, for, you know, helping the cause. Oh, and I also want to give a special thank you to Amit Moshe for helping to make this episode happen. We really appreciate it. And now I'm realizing I probably should have also thanked Sydney for making our interview with Amit happen. I gotta thank a lot of people from now on. <laughs> I think that's just inevitable. On the next episode, we seek out some crystal hearts of our own and see if we can survive some savage worlds. Until then... Thank you for joining us, and good gaming, everyone. That might be what he chose. <laughs> yeah, there's there's Ooh. something to think about. Uh, I just hiccuped. <laughs> excuse me, I'm gonna eat more peanut. Butter. Oh, more peanut butter for you. Get 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 on that. Uh, I've so, got literally just got the jar sitting here. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> it's probably smart. Yeah. You're welcome. For your peanut butter explosion. Oh, uh, so, <laughs> I love how you're doing your own Foley effects now. That's great. Uh, so, <laughs> were there uh, any other mechan- My mic has fallen out. Wait. Oh, oh no. there we go. My, my, oh, no. Into my, the peanut butter. No. <laughs> my, uh, my headphone uh, jack <laughs> came out of the thing. Uh, Slow clap for Nathan. Yeah. I'm slow clapping myself. That's how sad this is. I was slow clapping. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I was wondering who was clapping. Yeah, no, it was me. I was, I was slow clapping for myself. Just going to have my pity party by myself here. Oh, no. Oh, no, not that. <laughs>